Math 31, I had a question coming out of section 9.4, number 29. And here we were asked, um, what number does this series approach graphically? And in terms of the, this series that they're talking about, you have to look back at the setup of the question. And the setup of the question for 28 and 29 referenced this infinite geometric series. All right, and when I say, I'll, I'll put this here, infinite geometric series. Let me break down where all of these pieces are coming from. All right, so why did I write the word infinite? Because I have a upper limit of infinity here. So I'm going to add an infinite number of terms. Why did I say the word geometric? Well, because I have this power in here, right? And you can see my exponent, excuse me, my variable is up in the exponent. That's what a geometric sequence, or in this case series, because we're adding. That's what that would look like. And then you heard me reference series, and that's because I'm adding stuff, right? If I just had, hey, one half to the k here, and we listed out terms like one half, one fourth, one eighth, that is a geometric sequence. But when I add those terms, like one half plus one fourth plus one eighth, so on and so forth, that is a geometric series. And we want to figure out what do these add, numbers add up to. That's the whole point of this, right? And I always think it's kind of funky to think I could add an infinite number of numbers, right? Because I'm going to keep adding these numbers together. And it's, it's always weird to me. Like you could add those up forever and they don't add up to infinity. We're actually going to find out they total one, right? They don't even add up to anything that large. So just take a step back. Think about that. You're adding an infinite number of numbers and they never go over one, right? They never total out to anything over one. Okay, so let's look at, it, at this through a few different lenses. I'm gonna do what the actual problem said. I'm gonna do it graphically. And then I'm gonna show you a couple other ways that we could have gotten to one. So since this asked me to look at the graph, I went and I had and I plotted it, right? I put my function or my calculator in sequence mode, right? And you can see I'm adding a sequence, right? And when you add a sequence, that is quite literally code for series. I've got 0.5 raised to the n power, and I'm going from one to n. And my starting point I put is one half. And if you wanna know why I put one half, well, there's my sequence. So think if you had your starting point at n equaling one, well, one half to the one is one half. And you can see this plots out, right? And you can actually start to see there is this kind of bound on it. And as I traced the function, right? So I used my trace key and you see I'm going all the way at least to the 10th spot. The 10th partial sum is 0.999. So I want you to see that that sum right? It's getting pretty close to one. And if you're like, why are you saying sum? Because again, I'm taking the sum of that sequence. So that sum is getting close to one. That's what I see graphically. All right, but let's take a look at it through um, the lens of doing partial sums. So let me, let me back this out, okay? And let me just rewrite my series here. So I just want to remind you that we were looking at this series from k equaling one to infinity of one half to the k. All right, so what I want to do, I'll, I'll call this S sub K, I want to look at partial sums. And when I say partial sums, I want to add the first N terms, or in this case, maybe the first K terms together. So if you were to think about this series being written out, right, I would say this is one half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus one sixteenth plus goes on forever, right? But now let's look at the partial sum. When I say S sub one, I only want you to add that first term. Okay, and that would be one half. When I say something like S sub two, I want you to add the first two terms. And when I do that, I would get three fourths. Let me start color coding this so we can keep track. Yeah, and then when I say something like S sub three, I want you to add the first three terms together. And that would be seven eighths. And let me go one more. What color do we feel like doing? I'll do a yellow. S sub four, I want you to add the first four terms. So one, two, three, four. Right, and we get 15 sixteenths. And if you start to take a look at those decimals, right? This is 0 0.5, this is 0.75, this is, I can almost do this in my head, I think it's 0.875. And you'll have to give me a moment, let me find my calculator and let me do 15 sixteenths because I'm not remembering it off the top of my head. 15 sixteenths, ah, right, 0.9375. And if I had gone one further, you can see the next sum is 
0.96875, or it's 31 over 32. But take a look at this new sequence, really, but this partial sum sequence, right? What is happening to these numbers? They are getting closer and closer to 1. And that's another way of figuring out this partial sum, right? It's consistent here. And then there's even a third way, okay? So let me scroll down a little bit more, okay? But I want to remind you that our infinite sum, oh gosh, that's not really a great S. So our infinite sum was going to be from k equaling 1 to infinity of 1 half to the k. And I want to remind us that a sub 1 was 1 half and r was also 1 half. Now, since the absolute value of r is less than 1, right, we know this series will converge, and I get to use this formula that the infinite sum is a sub 1 over 1 minus r, and when I plug in a sub 1 being 1 half and r being 1 half, that turns out to 1. So there's yet a third way to, to conclude that this infinite sum is 1. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.